Para yung salong sa to, may buntag Pinoy. Kong? Yung tuhura, itong ipaila-ila, ang ato ang pinasidunggang dinapit karon medyo magdugo atong ilong rung panahon yes. na pero lahos-lahos na ni. <laughs> we have with us this morning an American national base in Thailand and from Impact Products Marketing he's the chief executive officer. Please welcome on the show Mr. Mr. Mitch Carson. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Hello Cebu Maing Buntag Pinoy. Hello Cebu. Yes. <laughs> so uh what brings you here, and what do you have for us, the Cebuanos and the Filipinos in general? I will bring an international crowd of speakers, experts from Australia, the United States, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, United Arab Emirates, any country. I've worked with 19 different nationalities and have brought them to different locations around the world. What are they going to do here? They're going to enjoy Cebu, be able to interact with Cebuanos like yourselves and enjoy the culture and be featured in the media here been able to mm -hmm. earn a spot on your show and be able to enjoy and interact with you people and understand your culture and, and enhance their media kit what, what's that for what, what what does impact products marketing do well there's a challenge I, I've been a speaker myself for 35 years on the platform and then I got into the natural evolution to become an event promoter and then I had to get traction out of my speakers that I would place on my stages as we traveled the world. If they didn't have media, it was hard to put butts in seats in events because there was no appeal. So we had to create the sizzle for the speakers. And how do you create sizzle? By traditional and non-traditional media assets, meaning radio, TV, television, you know, newspapers, mm -hmm. magazines, now podcasting, all of the elements need to be covered and still traditional media like television like we're here today is a critical asset that they need. Why Why have you chosen Cebu? We've already done Manila mm -hmm. and this is an entirely different culture. Uh, I mean I have a Manila person here with me today and she doesn't understand what you're saying so it truly is a different <laughs> market. <laughs> yes. And mm -hmm. Cebu is often referred to others as the new Singapore, the up-and-coming Singapore in terms of economic growth. Mm -hmm. You said earlier that you're going to bring in a group of your speakers and yes. experts. What, what do you provide for them, for, for your group of experts? Well, it starts with defining their message. Many times they're good at a particular craft and they don't know how to articulate that very well to a buying audience. And they are subject matter experts. We craft their message, get them prepared in order to be on television like this. What do you do? How do you stand? How do you project your voice? in order to be well received by an audience. I mean, no different than what you do as a communications professor. I get them prepared for the radio, get them prepared for television, get them ready for print. So their best person is communicated to their intended target market. You also have a studio here in Cebu? No, I do not. This so is the studio. This is my new studio. <laughs> I'm working with you folks, the mm -hmm. local experts. So you're tapping local, local media? Local expertise, yes. Yeah, I don't have media of my own. This is where we're tapping in all these different international markets and utilizing experts like yourselves. So how do you train people? Uh, not with a whip. It's more of a, explaining how to bring out their gems. Oftentimes they're just unpolished and we polish them in a way that they communicate best with the market. So you conduct these trainings with your experts and you mount events in every place that you visit. Exactly. In this case, in, in Cebu. So when when do you, when, do you already have a fixed schedule and how long will it take for the, for the training? Well, we're going to be in Manila for four days before we come to Cebu. We will travel here on the 21st of July and then 22nd, 23rd, we'll conduct our media tour and experience of Cebu. But do you but you don't have any fixed date yet as to when your your uh, training will be for for Cebu City? Well, the training is in Manila before mm -hmm. they take the stage and conduct media interviews there in in Manila. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to help Filipinos with with the service that you're bringing here? Well, Filipinos can join us also. Oftentimes, they have the same ambitions. I had I just recently spoke at a Toastmaster, my first Toastmasters event, uh, two nights ago here in Cebu many of whom have a desire to be in on stages they've never done it and they also want to be in front of the media many have explained and expressed their interest in having their messages received in their local markets so you will have local filipinos also 
you may be uh, you may be a fantastic speaker. Uh, tell me, tell us your background and and where did you graduate? I attended the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, California, and then later went on and got my MBA. I, as she detected very quickly, my undergraduate degree is in communication from the Annenberg School of Communications in my university, and later went on to host a radio show, and I also sold on live television at a channel called Home Shopping Network out of Florida, where you know I had about five million viewers every day selling wow. products, extemporaneous speech. You sell a lot. I, I did. Convincing I did. powers. I did my best, <laughs> because if you don't sell well, they say bye-bye. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's high pressure, high pressure selling. I mean, mm -hmm. it is live, you have call-ins, it, it was a great training ground for me to learn the speaking business. Why, the why, business. why do you do this? Why do you do what you're doing now? Speakers want to get their message out there. The best way to elevate their personal brand is through the strategic use of media. Mm -hmm. Traditional media, now the newer media, and, and social media is only one platform. There are YouTube channels popping up left and right. Yes. Most of them are terrible at interviewing people. They're not professionals. You two are professionals. You're trained to do this job. It takes professional training, in my opinion, in my opinion, in order to communicate and interact and bring out the gems in people. I mean, if you're a communications professor, you understand these, these elements. And I, probably because I'm a baby boomer myself, understand the importance of getting a proper education so you can bring out the best in your interviewees. But there are many generations, in this case, the millennials, who would not agree otherwise, because they think that if you have a video cam and you can talk, you just start talking, you have a vlog, uh -huh. and it's it's okay. But how do you, with you with your training and your experience, how do you bridge the gap between the capability to mount videos and do podcasts to doing it the right way? That's a great question, and I have run into that challenge exactly as you've described. Well, I don't need school. You know, I but, well, Bill Gates didn't graduate college. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg didn't graduate college, and look at them. I'm the next billionaire in training. Okay, that's great. Those are the exceptions. I think a formal education is how do you bridge that gap? Look at the results. Okay, then go to one of my trainings for a week and let's see how many more viewers and engagements and shares you get. Let's look at the metrics, the facts related to your audience involvement. It's all based on the measure, measurement, because if you didn't bring mm -hmm. in the numbers, you wouldn't be employed here. Mm -hmm. The same goes with YouTube. If you don't have the numbers and the shares and the views of the length of the videos, you don't make ad sense money. True, and it's important it's how you important. get these guys to click on whatever it is that you're showing or saying or selling in that case. And you know what is a common denominator anywhere in the world, and I've spoken in 59 countries, it's called money. <laughs> <laughs> if they're not making money and they can make more money through proper training, mm -hmm. that's it's a plus their factor. hot button. It's mm -hmm. their hot button. It makes everybody tinkle. Well, I'm not money oriented. Uh, really? Okay, how do you feed your children? That's mm -hmm. why they're skinny. Okay, let's get them fed through proper training and bring out the best you. If I want to be trained by you, how much will I spend? How much will it cost? To attend one of my events starts at $6,000 for about four days of training, direct involvement, and there's a lot of pre-training and then there's post-training. There are many deliverables. They'll get branding photography. They'll be exposed on television. They'll be exposed on radio. They will be interviewed on podcasts. I do believe in the non-traditional media as well. I have a podcast myself where they get covered, and they also get in print. They're covered and interviewed by print. So there's a whole package. They, their media training is comprehensive. You plan to do that in Cebu? Yes. Within the year? In July. July, okay. Of this year, yeah. They're going to mm -hmm. be here for two days after conducting the part Manila. one in Manila. Mm, okay. So they have two different media experiences. Well, uh, you were talking already about big names in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, who are some of the famous people that you've worked with or trained in that ma for that I, Well, uh, trained and worked with. I've worked with some 
people who you would possibly know, authors, have you heard of uh, Mark Victor Hansen and Jack mm -hmm. Canfield who authored the Chicken Soup for the Soul series? Yes. Mark Victor Hansen is a client of mine uh, that I've been able to work with. I've worked with, uh, these are a lot of Americans because that's my home country. And uh, Chris Okazaki, who is the largest speaker out of Tokyo, is a client of mine that's running an $80 million training company out of Japan. Uh, in Asia, uh, Joel Bauer out of the United States, Dan Kennedy out of the United States. There are many people. They go to you for what? what I mean, what what pushes them to seek your help in terms of training? Connections. They want to get on the worldwide stages. Mm -hmm. That's their desire: is to be able to be exposed outside of their home countries. Because when you're exposed outside of your home country and you're in the media. Guess what happens to your rates when you go back home? They go up. Yeah. Because the perception of, oh, if they're international, they're valued more. Mm -hmm. This is a truism. I've conducted events, seven of them, in Dubai. It that increases has the high, value. Uh, in, tremendous. Whether they do business or not in Dubai is irrelevant. As but long the, as they... <laughs> they show okay. the media. Yeah, we've been on CNBC in Dubai. We were also in the in, in CNN, covered by CNN, Dubai One. All these different media outlets add to these are additional arrows in the quiver. When they're out there shooting away, trying to make money or get on stages, if you've got this media from a variety of countries, your value always goes up. It's so you've also diminished. worked in Dubai One. Yes. Yeah. They're big studios, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's this where is they do all the productions for the major movie uh, companies also. Yeah, Dubai One. I mean, I, I've been on Reuters Television, Fox Television, mm -hmm. covered in the Wall Street Journal. All the different media is added to myself, so I've never had to market myself. So you are now more expensive and your value is yes. way higher. Yeah, well, Dubai, <laughs> the event there when I run it is $12,000. Wow. Costs okay. are higher. Well, you, you, you were talking about Toastmasters earlier. So what sure. sets you apart from Toastmasters since we know that they also do a lot of trainings for public speaking? Toastmasters is an exceptional organization. As a matter of fact, I'm coming back in April to speak as a keynote at their national conference here in the Philippines, what's held, held here in Cebu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with these Toastmasters who learn the art of public speaking, overcoming their fears, omitting the faux pas of um, and the ah, um and the all these you knows, <laughs> things like that, right, all of these verbal, verbal no-nos that we know as communication professionals. They're great at that, overcoming the initial fear of standing on the stage. I take speakers like them or people who want to be professionals. There's a difference between being trained to be a good speaker inside a company or to communicate a corporate message, and there's something different about making money with that craft. I show them the four styles of making money, either as an MC, a trainer, a keynote speaker, or a platform salesman. I'm a platform salesman. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. So we look forward to having you back with your experts when you're back on June or July? In July. July. In okay. July. It'll be great. But I might be back in April. Who knows? For the Toastmasters yes, event. The Toastmasters. So, yes, Toastmasters. Okay, we'll see you here. Great. Okay. Uh, your message to our viewers who are watching right now. If you have any questions, want to get in touch with me, you can reach me directly, directly at Mitch, M-I-T-C-H, at MitchCarson.com, M-I-T-C-H-C-A-R-S-O-N.com, Mitch at MitchCarson.com. I look forward to communicating with any of you out there in Cebu land. I only speak English and some Spanish, so please don't write me in Cebuano. Mitch at MitchCarson.com, and I would love to interact with you Cebuanos. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.